Professor Gerencsér, who is rector of the University of Pannonia, and András already said some of uh, the, uh, the reference to your recent papers where you were heavily uh, acting as a uh, bell. Uh, how, how? Us up. No, huh? Yeah, so, so you were ringing the bell that uh, we are close to the end of what we di did so far. Okay. Sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I also prepared four slides only, so I will be shorter than uh, expected. And uh, I will start right uh, from the middle. I, this is how, how global problems uh, may be solved. There, there is actually two, two ways of solving global problems. Problem is up there, here. And then uh, we have to acquire knowledge on the problem, so science uh, must do their, its job to get a, a grip of the, of the problem, and then, uh, based on the knowledge that we, we collected, we have to find some solution. And the upper part of this, uh, this uh, slide uh, represents real world. Real world is very narrow because it is constrained by physical and uh, natural laws, and it, uh, it's very constrained. You cannot do anything or can it, you cannot do too many things in the real world because, because you, are, you are constrained by the law of, of nature. But uh, to, uh, these days, and uh, I, m I mentioned it in, uh, in my uh, opening speech in the morning, that uh, since the birth of the internet and the spread of the internet, there, uh, there has been an alternative truth emerging. It's uh, used also by politics but used by other people as well, and it can also be called virtual reality. And virtual reality is much broader than, uh, than the real world, because you can do anything in virtual reality, uh, but you cannot do it in the real world. And, and then, uh, 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 in order to solve some of the problem, the problem itself is too complex to be solved uh, by uh, politicians, they do not even understand the, the problem itself, so they need to uh, deliver some uh, very simple message from the problem, uh, derive uh, some uh, message. This I call one-bit message. Uh, all problems need to be simplified to a one-bit message, otherwise it cannot be tackled by politicians and by the public, uh, and add some uh, economic interest, uh, may, mo mostly the interest of big uh, multinational companies, and then comes out some uh, virtual solution, which is not the solution of the problem, but the solution that seems to be a, a real-world solution, but it isn't. And uh, the color is uh, uh, indicating that there is, you can I imagine that, okay, this is uh, the water here, the blue one is water, and the above water is reality. The water is very deep, you can do whatever you want uh, in the water, but you find solutions which is brown, just a symbol of something which comes to the surface as a new problem. I wouldn't uh, go into details of that, but <laughs> so that's a problem, a solution which is actually not a solution, but something, a start of a new problem then has to be tackled. And I will show examples of both ways. First, uh, the good way, which happens in the real world. And that was, uh, Actually, okay, this one, okay. So this was a success story of humanity. This is how we, we tackled global ozone. Um, here I showed some of the milestones of, uh, of, this, uh, uh, of this issue. Starting from science, there were some uh, scientific achievements. Actually, they were worth, worth of Nobel Prize. So all these guys uh, won a Nobel Prize except Lovelock. Uh, for uh, the discovery of, of uh, ozone chemistry. And then almost uh, only a decade after uh, came politicians and, and uh, they had uh, a treaty or they reached uh, agreement upon how to fix ozone, global ozone. So it's uh, seemingly it's a success story, but there is uh, a Vienna Convention. Have any of you heard of Vienna Convention on Ozone? No, you, you have heard of Montreal Protocol? Yeah, all of you? Yeah. 
Montreal Protocol and Ozone, but not on Vienna Convention. Vienna Convention was first. It was nothing. It was just, okay, we have to research, we have to get more information, like in climate, climate uh, treaties. We have to uh, do more research, cooperate, something, L just bullshit. <coughs> and that was first. But at the same year, when this uh, Vienna uh, Convention was signed, came out of the blue the ozone hole above the Ar Antarctic. And then uh, the people were, all politicians were uh, frightened, and they very quickly put together uh, a real um, meaningful protocol, which uh, then was uh, observed, and then, then the ozone problem was uh, solved, and the ozone layer is now recovering. So it was a solution from the real world, originally not intended to do so, but, but nature helped, and then frightened us enough to, to make real uh, change and to solve the problem very quickly, within, within a decade, from the first uh, scientific discovery. So it was a very record uh, uh, fast, uh, fast solution to the problem. So this happened in the real world, actually. Uh, and, and what about climate change? Climate change is actually, the problem of climate change is older than the ozone problem. So it started, it dates back to the 19th century when, uh, when this uh, uh, connection was first uh, recognized by the Swedish chemist Ar Arrhenius. But then uh, in the middle of, or the end of the eight, uh, 50s, uh, this global CO2 monitoring started and, and uh, there were, uh, science were quite, uh, um, ready to, to uh, state that this is a real problem. And then came politi politics, uh, and actually the first conference on global climate in Geneva was earlier than the Ozone Convention, even in Vienna. So it, it, uh, it came earlier. And then it contained this message, the one-bit message is CO2 temperature. Came the global warming. This is a very simple message. And this is this seems obvious from the from uh, the comparison of the trends of both uh, CO2 concentration and uh, temperature, because the two goes together, so there is a casual relation between the two. So, if in order to fix the global climate, you have to do something with CO2, and that's so. So this is a simple message, which is uh, the, uh, which is not true, of course, because the climate is a much more complex system than than uh, it. Um, it seems, so it is a very complex system, but it, it's a very simple message that came. And then came the solution in the alternative world. It's the simple solution is just eliminate CO2 and then you have all the climate change fixed. So this is uh, how it looks like. Or, uh, it's uh, international politics, so the ma magic uh, buzzword is decarbonization. This is... This is uh, the magic bullet, it solves everything. So if we change uh, from fossil fuel to renewables, then we are fine and we can do whatever we want and we can continue economic growth unlimited, uh, infinitely. So it's, this is the message that it conveys. And like in the tales, in the fairy tales, so there is a bad guy, is the fossil, is the oil, it's bad. and the, Hero is the renewable, which uh, kills the fossil and then saves the world, like Captain America or whatever, Captain Planet. So it's a, it's a kind of a, a fairy tale, and it, it sounds very nice, but it's not true. But the main reason for selecting this option for solving the climate change, instead of looking at the problem in, in, uh, in, uh, more deeply, is actually that there are two options to combat climate change. One is to reduce consumption, to, to, be, to keep our, our life uh, within the boundaries of the earth, not using uh, resources, not uh, wasting resources, but to keep uh, within the boundaries. This, this was represented by the Club of, uh, 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 Club of Rome uh, report from the 70s, so the limits to growth. Uh, that uh, Earth is fini finite and we, there is no uh, way to, to grow indefinitely. But this 
would decrease GDP. So it's not a solution at all, because then politicians will, will not be elected again, and uh, and uh, share shareholders would not receive uh, money at, at the end. So that's uh, that's not an option to to select this uh, this uh, way of uh, solving environmental problems. But if we select this one, the second one which is the mainstream actually, then we increase GDP. We have to replace the whole infrastructure. We have to, to just throw out uh, these uh, old fossil stuff and, and uh, get new one. This is a very good uh, business, very good business. Pay, uh, with high uh, profit, it's actually giga profit, will be earned if we do this. But the problem is that we would not have resources to do that. But this is because this is in the real world. This solution is in the alternative reality or alternative or virtual reality or alternative truth. It will run into the limits of resources very soon. So that's not, but that's the mainstream. So unfortunately, it's, uh, it's taken up by, uh, by global politics. And we are convinced that we are doing it right because we are living in, an, in the realm of alternative reality, and we will save the world and save the climate and whatever, but in, instead we will run into uh, an, a collapse or an, an uh, economic crisis, a long-lasting crisis of modern civilization, because we do not consider the other alternative, which would be the only feasible uh, solution to any environmental problem if human uh, consumption is reduced uh, significantly, but that's not an option currently for uh, most of the politicians and most of the world. But with this, I think that we will run into problems within a couple of uh, decades when we run out of natural resources which are not available. And unfortunately, money can be, uh, can be uh, produced, I mean uh, printed or whatever, but uh, energy, for example, or mineral resources cannot be printed. Not, so that will be a problem for humanity, and we have to be aware of that instead of uh, doing something in the, alternate, in the realm of alternative truths. Okay, thank you, and that was my talk.